It started with a weird piercing sound. It was persistent, high pitched, high pitched sound, very, very loud. Those who heard it told newspapers it was soon followed by strong nausea, an incredible case of vertigo, dizziness, excruciating headaches. These mysterious afflictions were first reported in the Cuban capital in 2016. And they were thus called Havana Syndrome. Havana Syndrome. Havana Syndrome. Since then, more cases have been reported in China, Vienna, and now also Berlin. The symptoms were described as an invisible injury. Many victims reported brain damage without ever sustaining a concussion. What's even stranger is that of about 200 reported cases, nearly half involved CIA agents. That's why these incidents started to look a lot like sonic attacks, attack of unknown nature with a mysterious invisible weapon. Conjectures abounded. The investigations that followed focused on sonic weapons, energy devices, and secret microwave beams. But while speculation like this bends the limits of what's physically possible, some scientists are putting forward a rather unremarkable explanation that has been remarkably overlooked. The line of demarcation in the Cold War lies in Berlin. Berlin has long been a city of spies. During the Cold War, it was the closest contact point between the East and the West, a city where Soviets and NATO powers were constantly spying on each other from the other side of the Berlin Wall. Their answer, the wall. Today, some experts think the city could once again become a hotbed of espionage. And they point to a familiar suspect, Russia. Berlin recently reported two cases of Havana syndrome. Both victims were US officers working on cases linked to Russia. One on the controversial Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the other one on Russian cyber attacks. But why would anyone think Russians are using microwave beams? Well, maybe because they've done it before. From 1953 to 1976, Russia bathed the US embassy in Moscow with microwaves. US intelligence called it the Moscow signal. Microwaves have also already been used as a weapon. The so-called active denial system developed by the US uses wave energy to disperse crowds. You might have seen clips of drones taken down using similar technology. Oh, and remember that ticking sound? Microwaves can produce audible clicks too. This is called the Frey effect. If you put it all together, the image of Russian spies using new energy weapons seems pretty plausible, right? We could speculate about little green men, you know, throwing lightning bolts down at these people. My name is Kenneth Foster, F-O-S-T-E-R. I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Pennsylvania uh, in biomedical engineering. I have, well, maybe at this point, a 50-year interest in the subject, as well as being, having done some of the original research on this, this effect. You have to have evidence to draw conclusions, and there was none. The first problem is that a microwave weapon would be difficult to hide. No, you're talking about something the size of a big shipping container. The antennas are probably three meters across. The beam would also leave clear evidence. It would cause major interference problems, and it's hard to focus the energy in a small beam, and the field strength is so large that it would burn out Wi-Fi sets and reset computers. Oh, and that strange sound? A declassified investigation suggests it was likely Caribbean crickets. As this theory loses credibility, some scientists are asking us to consider one that's even more uncomfortable. Functional disorders are incredibly common, actually. They're the second commonest reason to see a neurologist and the commonest reason to see a gastroenterologist, and yet it's incredibly hidden. Enter John Stone, one of 38 prominent neurologists, psychologists, and psychiatrists who wrote an open letter suggesting that these symptoms could be best explained as a kind of functional disorder. 
Harvard Medical School defines them as a condition with symptoms that no physical examination or testing can explain. The condition is considered to be a mental disorder, but it results in very real physical ailments. So, for example, irritable bowel syndrome or fibromyalgia and many other forms of chronic pain are types of functional disorder. They do have their basis in the body. They're not just all in the mind that these things are actually happening. Given the lack of clarity over how functional disorders arise, patients often encounter skepticism when talking about them. At times, they have been described as a form of hysteria, compounding stigmas around them. There is that characterization of functional disorders as, you know, these are conditions affected by work-shy people or people with mental illness. It's just not the case. Anyone can be affected by a functional disorder including CIA agents. Dizziness, headaches, nausea are all typical symptoms of functional disorders. When I read about these patients, I thought, well, these are patients that are typical of patients I would see on a Monday morning in my clinic. But the similarities don't stop here. Nearly all types of brain injury are worst at the beginning, because that's when the brain's just been injured and then slowly improve over time. But with the Havana syndrome, symptoms typically worsen over time. What we see in functional disorders is very often that. Patients have a minor physical event, it does give them symptoms, but then it sets in train a set of symptoms which kind of worsen each other. So you have dizziness, and then you can't sleep, and the more you can't sleep, the more tired you get, and then other symptoms come along. Exceptional stress can also trigger these disorders. If your boss at work tells you there might be a sonic weapon around, then you might start to interpret things that are actually perhaps normal initially as a problem. The jury is still out on what caused these symptoms. Other experts disagreed that they were caused by functional disorders. Perhaps it was a combination of factors. Perhaps something completely different. I've not met these patients and it's really important that I'm, I'm not sitting here saying I know what's wrong with these people because that's not good medicine. What's certain is that the pain these people are going through is very real. The distinction between psychological and physical pain, much less so. These are common disabling, distressing conditions that can affect anybody you know, from any walk of life. And why is it that we are dismissing them with incredibly stereotyped and stigmatized views? That doesn't make any sense to me. We should be considering them seriously. And thinking about more ordinary explanations for illnesses, perhaps before extraordinary ones.